you want to commit a sin, but also get away with it? Here's a sinfully tasty recipe that is as lean and healthy as it is good for your conscience. Hi, I'm Andre, and I'll show you simple recipes for making sophisticated fish dishes. Skinny bitch cod, arguably one of the leanest fish, wrapped in every catwalk model's favorite. Courgette. This is a mega versatile recipe that we can enjoy all year round. It's not that difficult to execute, and it's a visual stunner on the plate. And just like the eponymous boozy cocktail, which you can drink without getting too drunk too quickly, you can enjoy loads of this dish without getting too full. Got your attention there, haven't I? Speaking of skinny bitches and catwalks, these two are in no way correlated, by the way. One can't help but think of the most beautiful city in the world, Paris. Paris also happens to be the birthplace of this phenom fishy cookbook, Poissonnerie, from which I'm attempting to cook every recipe for this YouTube series. At this point, a big shout out to its author, the fishmonger of all French fishmongers, Arnaud Vanam. Meet Conrad, the cod. There are theories that in pursuit of cod, the Vikings and the Basque had reached the shores of North America long before Columbus did. Again, no glory for those working with fish. And it's a popular story that the grand seafaring nation of Portugal has 365 different recipes for cod. One for each day of the year. Important question, is cod sustainable? Well, that depends. Some years ago, there was a near collapse of cod stocks along the eastern coast of the US and Canada, which at one point was so severe that lobsters began to frolic and multiply in absence of this predatory fish. Perhaps they should rename Cape Cod to Cape Lobster then. Ooh. On the other hand, cod populations of the northeastern Atlantic around Norway and Iceland are managed particularly well and are doing accordingly. Lobsters, however, are not vibing over there. To make things more interesting, well, for me at least, you just have to sit through it. There's a second North Pacific species of cod, which is very similar to the Atlantic one, which is very, very strictly managed by the US and Canadian Fisheries Authority. So the answer to our initial question is, it depends where the fish is from. While some stocks are vulnerable, others are not. The best way for us consumers to shop sustainably is by buying produce that has been certified as such. So just ask your fishmonger or go for, a, uh, for an MSC certified fish. Name time. The scientific name for cod is Gados marua or Gados macrocephalus for the Pacific species. The French call it cabillaud. The Portuguese refer to it as bacalao, although I'm not getting into a discussion on the proper nomenclature of dry cod. Eh -eh. The Italians call it merluzzo, in Japan it's known as tara, and in Germany, dorsch. Although, to be precise, a dorsch is a cod that lives in the Baltic Sea, while well, you can also say cabriau. But dorsch sounds just more German. I won't bore you with the average nutritional values anymore, you can just read them over here. Today's shopping list is super simple and short. All you need are two rectangular shaped cod fillets weighing about 400 grams each. Now, don't worry, you can definitely get this fish already filleted, but it is my mission to demonstrate what it is a fishmonger and a chef does in order to arrive to the finished product. You'll also need three courgettes and optionally a little bit of extra salt and some sugar. The sweetness of shortness continues in our utensils list. You'll need a bowl, a skimmer, a mandolin, some trays, cling film and a stock pot. The recipe asks for scissors. I prefer a paring knife, however, it's totally up to you what you're going to go with. And should you choose to fillet the fish yourself, for cod you'll need a sturdy and long filleting knife. This one's about uh, 27 centimeters. 
make a swift incision at the nape of the head around the bony edge of the skull, behind both fins down to the belly. Turn the fish around and repeat, snap off his head. Flawless victory! Cut above the two anal fins. Place the cod's head end to your right. Make your first cut down the back, try to feel the spine with your blade, as this will guide you and give you stability. Go back around the vertebrae. Place the fish upright and in a swooping motion cut through the rib cage. Finish by separating the tail from the bone. This is why we made the initial cut at the beginning by the way, so we wouldn't get stuck in the fins. And there's our first side. Beauty! Repeat the first cut above the anal fins. Flip the fish and this time start the other way around by leading your blade from the tail end towards the head. Put the fish upright again, cut through the rib cage, and take off the fillet by following through with your life. The bones are clean enough for me not to get fired. Also, I'm going to keep these for stock. By the way, check out my episode on fish stock. For our recipe, you only need to cut out the middle pieces on each side. This bit here is not relevant to a recipe, but I'll show you how to finish prepping your cod anyway. Feel the pin bones and separate them from the so-called loin fillet. This cut is absolutely divine by the way. Slide your knife between the skin and belly and push away from the pin bones. Trim off the belly membrane. And congratulations, we made a fish roulade. Aid between skin and fillet and slide across to separate these two. The result is a clean, skin-free, beautiful fillet. Skin both pieces and now let's do a test. Remember the optional salt and sugar. I'm going to brine one fillet with a generous amount of both and let it sit in the fridge for 30 minutes. Courgette. Trim as you would and slice over the mandolin lengthwise into the bowl. This is uh, what this could look like. Plunge into boiling water, blanch for about 30 seconds and chill immediately on ice. This is just to tenderize the courgettes to make them more pliable. Arrange and pat dry on kitchen paper. After 30 minutes, let's compare the two fillets. The unsalted one is soft, as was to be expected, while the brined one has lost quite a bit of water and is visibly firmer to the touch. I now have to rinse off the brine in the sink, which unfortunately I can't show you as my camera setup is not very backsplash friendly. Pat dry. Roll out the cling fill. I'm doubling down as I want to make sure that my fish is sealed in properly. Now start arranging the courgettes as follows. Uh, uh, okay. Season to your heart's content. And place the fillet in the center as shown. Now start folding each side onto the fish, creating a little package. and re-wrap firmly and roll into a candy-shaped uh, sausage. Place a pot with cold water onto the hob and add the cod wraps. Note that the enclosed air acts as buoyancy control, keeping the delicate fish away from the hot pot bottom. Put on medium heat and once the water's come to a boil, reduce to simmer and cook for another 8 minutes. Now let's cut open this bad boy. I'm reserving this super fragrant cooking liquid to boil my rice in tonight. Oh, noise. Pat dry. I'm sensing a theme in this video. 
And a moment of truth. Drum roll. Yeah, not too bad. Good things come to those who wait. I don't know whether you could see it in the money shot, but the piece that uh, we brined previously with salt and sugar had significantly less coagulated albumin come out. So that's a good thing. Now let's taste. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is better, Giselle or Heidi. It's always the same thing with those skinny bitches. You never know which one to pick. Anyway, I do know which one I'm taking home tonight. Madame Sancerre. By the way, if you like this episode, please feel free to check out my previous one and uh, subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.